Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve a problem, kth distinct string in an array. So pretty much like the name implies, we are given a list of strings. So I guess we can look at this sort of simplified example. I won't be putting the quotes around each of the strings, but you can kind of assume that they're there. We're given a bunch of strings here. We're also given a parameter k equals two. So the idea is that from the beginning of the array, we want to count the distinct strings. So d is a distinct string because it doesn't show up anywhere else in the array. So this is the first distinct string. B is not a distinct string because it does show up in the array over there. So this is kind of skipped. Next, C is also not distinct, so we skip this one as well. We get to B again. Now, this is the thing that might make you have an error in your code. To check if this is not distinct, we don't just look at the strings to the right of it. We should also look at the strings that came before it as well. So we know that we did see a B earlier. So this one is also not distinct. Same thing with the C. We saw one earlier. It's not distinct. But we do reach a second distinct string, A. It never showed up anywhere else. So this is the second one so that's the one that we would return now it's possible that maybe in this example k was three well we didn't have three distinct strings in the input in that case we would return an empty string the idea of how to solve this problem is pretty similar to what i just showed you at least that's the brute force solution we can have two nested loops and the second loop will go through all the positions in the input, not just to the right of where their current pointer happens to be. In this case, it's a string of characters, but you can see in the second example, they could be strings that are longer than one. So we'll check for every string if it's distinct or not. We'll keep a running score. We can have a separate variable called distinct, which counts the number of distinct characters or strings rather. And then once this is equal to K, we know that we've found the kth distinct one and we can return it immediately. We could separately just take the K variable that's provided to us and decrement it. Since it's a primitive variable, it doesn't really matter if we modify it. A new copy of this is created when it's passed into our function. That's kind of what I'm getting at. So it's fine, I think, to modify this variable. This approach is going to be clearly n squared because for every single string, we're going to loop over the entire input. But the benefit of this approach is that it is a constant space solution, at least the way I'm going to implement it. So for whatever reason, in the editorial, the brute force solution uses extra space. I'm not quite sure why that it's implemented this way with leak code. I guess it might be simpler to understand, but I don't really think it is. So I'm going to show you the way that actually saves space because that's the whole point of using the brute force approach. So like I said, nested loops for I in range every single position through the input. And we're going to have a second loop for j in range going through all the same positions. Now, we want to check that the string at index i is distinct or not. So we're comparing it to every other string in the input. So we do something like this. If the array, well, I guess there's a couple things I want to start with. First of all, we know we want to skip when i and j are equal. So that's the statement I'll add first. If i is equal to j, then we just want to skip it. So let's just continue. Now, how are we keeping track that this is a distinct string or not? Well, the way I'm going to do it is by having a flag. So I'm going to call it the distinct flag. Initially, we'll assume that it is distinct. That's why this is considered true right now. But if we ever see a string at index j, that is the same as the current string, therefore it's not distinct. So we will then set the distinct flag equal to false, and we can also probably terminate the loop early because there's no reason to check any of the other strings. Now, after the inner loop is done, we want to know is it distinct or not. So if the distinct flag is still true, that means that we found a distinct string. Now we could have a separate variable that keeps track of the distinct strings and then in here we could increment that variable, but it's easier to, well, I guess it saves us code to get rid of that variable and just use k. And then k here can be decremented by one. And then if we ever reach a point where k is equal to zero, we can immediately return because we know that this is the kth distinct string. So the one that's at index i. So we can just go ahead and return array at index i. Now, if this never executes, obviously, and the outer loop is also finished, then we did not find the kth distinct string. Then out here, we can just return the empty string as the default value. So let's go ahead and run this. You can see it works, but it's not very efficient. There is a better approach. The only downside is it's going to cost us some memory. 
This is an n squared constant space solution. I'll show you how to do a linear time linear space solution. Conceptually, it's pretty simple, I think. Generally, the data structure you always want to try first is some kind of hash-based data structure. The simplest way to do it with this problem is a hash map. In our case, we'll be using it to count the occurrences of every single string. So imagine you had that. How many times does D show up? It shows up once. How many times does B show up? Twice. C also shows up twice. And A shows up a single time. The problem with the hash map, though, is that these won't necessarily be in the same order that we inserted them in. So how can we get around that? Well, we'll have to iterate over the input once again. So one time to build this hash map, we iterated over the input array. And now a second time, we'll have to iterate over the input to check the count of every single one of these. So that's analogous to us for this character going through the entire input to check if there's any duplicates. The only difference is that now we'll just be doing a simple lookup with our hash map. Lookups are constant time with hash maps, same as inserting and incrementing and all that. This will be a two pass solution, but that's still linear time. So it's going to quickly go like this for D. We'll see, OK, it only shows up once. Therefore, it's distinct. We can keep track of the distinct ones. That's the first one. We'll see this one. It's not distinct because the count is not one. So skip it. C is also not distinct and B, same thing, same thing with C. We already did that. Now A is distinct. So this is the second one. So we would return this one. So now let's code this up. The easiest way to get the count of each character or each string, sorry, I keep saying that, is just to use a counter in Python. Sometimes I can feel like cheating though. So I'll kind of show you how to do the same thing. This is basically creating a hash map counting the occurrences of each string in the array. But we can do the same thing like this. It's better to usually use a default dictionary in Python if you want to know how they work. I think I cover it in Python for coding interviews. Um, but then we're just going to go through every string in the array. And then we're going to do this. The count of that string is going to be incremented by one. In some languages, or even in Python, if you were to use a regular hash map like that, you would code it up like this. If s is not in count, we don't want to get a key error, which we would with this. So you can just initialize it to something. In our case, let's just initialize it to zero. That way, we don't need to put this in like an else statement. So we can save ourselves one line of code because we could have coded it up this way as well. There's no major difference between these two. So I prefer the one that's shorter. But I think I just showed you like three ways how to do this. So um, let's just get into the rest of the solution. For the second phase, we're going to go through every string in the array and we're going to get the count of it, right? That's how we know if it's distinct or not. So if the count is one, it's distinct. So what we're going to do, instead of having a separate variable, just like before, we're going to use k, we're going to decrement it by one. If k ever reaches zero, we found k distinct integers and we can return uh, this one, k distinct string, sorry. So this is the kth one, so that's what we would return. Otherwise, down here, we would return an empty string. So I'll go ahead and run this now. And you can see it works, and somehow it's even more memory efficient. I'm not really sure how that's possible, but anyways, if you found this helpful, check out neatcode.io. I cover, like, I think everything about Python in two separate Python courses that have a bunch of interactive lessons. Perfect for beginners. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you soon.